Hello, everybody. It's uh, been a little bit of a uh, while since I've done any Let's Plays or anything. I, I started um, I started Hack and Slash a while ago. Um, got busy with a day job and all that. Uh, didn't go back to it. Honestly, I, I don't feel a lot of um, need to continue that series. Um, so instead, um, I wanted to try a different game here. And they recently picked up Night Team 4 Military Hacking. And I, I started it up yesterday, uh, got to the main menu, and decided, hey, you know what? This might be something worth recording, you know? So let's see what we got. Oh, and I, I should also mention I am uh, extremely sick, which is why I have time to do this today. And I know I probably don't sound the best, so I'm sorry. I suppose I should probably wait for there to be some actual action here. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's across both of my monitors. I don't like that. Stinger OS now active. Night Team 4, Stealth Edition, user account. You already have an Allison Smith account, or if you want to sign up for an even more immersive experience, including ARG components, live events, raids, Twitch. No, I don't want to do that. Just want to play? Yeah, that's me. I don't know what I'm missing, but I feel it's probably not very much. Oh, Kali Linux is a trademark of offensive security. This uses Kali, apparently. Cobalt Strike is a trademark of site. Wow, okay. Well, this might actually be the real deal, then. Uh, because of that, I feel the need, probably, to go ahead and review the terms and conditions and privacy policy. Not that I won't just sign them anyway. Uh, uh, uh. Don't need to worry about that. We're not creating an account. Online payments... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Doesn't say anything about being PCI compliant, but I suppose they have to be. Rules of conduct. Seems like a lot of rules for a game about hacking, but I understand their... Uh, here we go, hacking policies. I understand they're um, wanting to protect themselves. Program assisted reinforcing hacking of site infrastructure, WP admin server, etc. is not allowed under any circumstances. Okay. If an item is meant to be accessible, it will be so by virtue of hints pointing to this fact. Well, what if I miss the hints? I don't want to accidentally do something. If there is a suspicion that a given area should be accessible, manual, not assisted attempts are allowed. And this includes manual brute forcing attempts, but not. Okay, so they just don't want me slamming it with a program. They, don't, they, just don't, they just don't want to brute force like crazy. These guidelines are in place to help ensure the experience is enjoyable for everyone. Automated attack stress servers. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. In addition, they are also there to help prevent players from moving outside the confines of what is lawfully permission, permitted. Yeah, okay. Uh, that makes perfect sense. You know, actually, I'm not planning on doing anything. It doesn't say anything about recording that I can see from skimming. Unsolicited creative submissions. That yeah, doesn't matter. It would be fair use anyway. Fan size. Interview isn't filming at events. Don't plan on attending any. Um, okay. Seems pretty boilerplate. I think we'll just go right ahead. Welcome, agent. Hello. Welcome to the Stinger OS. Please visit the academy to get your first assignment so i don't want this to span two monitors i'm only recording one monitor so and i also would like to be able to keep an eye on the clock because there must be a way to not have it span right well why is the quality so low right does terminal font size display particles yet yeah. which is yes this must be yes Window opacity, blurred window, and that's all they have. Okay. Uh, is it under skins? Why would it be under skins? General? Stop 
spanning both monitors. What the hell? If it's not under graphics, where the hell is it? Oh, I'm going to need subtitles to tell you that. Douglas Holmquist soundtrack. I don't know who that is. And I also don't know if this is yes or no. I'm assuming that's yes. Uh, activate Fayette every... I don't know. I want to turn it off and click here for more. This is not what I'm looking for. Did the graphics have click here for more? No, they didn't. Okay. Hmm. Uh, no, I don't want an assignment. What's this? No good administrator. Game editors, tool set, advanced tools. No, I can't have, I don't have access to that yet. Want to move outside the Stinger OS and launch your default web browser? No thanks. So I think I get the point here. This is supposed to be kind of be a mix between a game and real life. It's using your actual browser. It's using real world stuff. That's great. I'm I'm definitely into that. Uh, I am not into rec uh, requisitioning both of my monitors, but I'm also now getting tired of trying to find the right setting. So I may merely remain annoyed for now. Well, well, I guess let's at least see what the game is about, and then that way, if I'm only going to play for like two minutes, then it's not a big deal. Welcome to boot camp, recruit. I'm Sergeant Wheeler, and I'm here to teach you all you'll need to know to become an elite member of our cyber warfare unit. Your recruitment officer told me you've got a decent head on your shoulders, and I'm here to find out whether or not that's an accurate assessment. It's not. I, I sure come clean right now. We only take the best at 19-4. Then I'll see you. Network intrusion and technical evaluation. Your task is to identify, infiltrate, and gather intelligence from computer systems used by enemies of the Black Watchmen. Okay. Governments are short on time and resources, so it's up to us to take action. We address imminent global threats that can't wait for bureaucracy. Because we're a covert organization operating outside the rules of engagement that govern our allies, intelligence agencies around the world seek our help. It really sounds like you're asking me to do things that are illegal in probably more than one way. Ready for the challenge? Then let's lock in. Is this game a secret recruiting tool for the NSA or CIA or something like that? Because it really seems like it might be. Uh, also, definitely asking me to do things that are illegal. Um, just because you're doing them uh, for good reasons doesn't mean that they're not illegal. But I'll play along. The Academy to learn how to use the Stinger OS. Your officers are there. Excuse me, my voice. Your officers are there to guide you through each certification and teach you about the world of cyber warfare. Well, teach me. Teach me, Daddy. Select the Stinger OS Basic certification in the panel on your left. Yep. That will bring up an information screen. I click. I click. I click. I click. I click. I'm, I'm impatient. Access. Certification. Phase one. Ready. System is our own cyber warfare and network intrusion platform. It's a beautiful piece of software built by combining the most advanced open source hacking modules from civilian and military sources. If you've experienced any penetration testing platforms like Colleague or Metasploit, you'll recognize similarities. Zoning out already? Okay, I know most of you have the attention span of a goldfish when it hey, comes fuck to you. basic training, but mastering this intrusion platform it's is true, though. key to becoming a lethal cyber warfare agent in the field. Ready to get started? <laughs> Real life experience. Stinger OS menu. If this takes more than five minutes, I'll fire our user interface team. Only kidding, it'll be easier to fire you. Less paperwork. Each certification is broken up into three stages, and your objective will automatically update as we progress. <sighs> Click Initiate Phase 1 on your left panel, and I'll pass you over to one of our agents to take it from here. Dylan's trained many of our recruits, so you're in good hands. So I, I when I saw the, the, the use... Uh, I'm sorry, hold on a moment. <laughs> um, when I saw that they referenced Callie and... All that I had, I had hopes that this would be grounded in in um, something like reality, but um, it looks like getting through the UI into what seems to be the actual tutorial part of the game. Uh, it's not. This is definitely very sci-fi, um, for sure. 
Um, but that's okay. Well, let's play a little bit and see what we get. Real life references. Goldfish attention span. Yeah, let's see what happens. Um, okay. You now have a shorter retention span than a goldfish. Well, thanks for the Time Magazine article, I guess. You know what? Let's see what it says. 2,000 participants in Canada. Activity of 112 others using EEGs. Microsoft found, found that since the year 2000. Okay, researchers in Canada surveyed 2,000 participants. Microsoft found that since the year 2000, or about when the mobile revolution began, the attention span dropped from 12 to 8 seconds. So researchers in Canada surveyed participants, but Microsoft found... What? Heavy multi-screeners find it difficult to filter out irrelevant stimuli. There are more... This is bullshit. This article is bullshit. Where's their source? Of course they don't fucking have any. Why would they? Why would they cite their sources? I can tell you this is absolutely untrue. 100%. When was this written? 2015. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in 2015, if I'm remembering the articles that I'm familiar with, plenty of other studies before in that time show the exact opposite. Uh, yes, it is true that there are certain uh, indicators uh, that uh, will cause somebody's attention span to drop. First of all, it's comparing our attention span to that of a goldfish. That itself is already a misnomer. We're starting off on the wrong foot. The whole uh, goldfish having short attention spans thing, it's comparing apples to oranges. Um, goldfish do not have a short attention span. They have an attention span that is appropriate for the way in which they've evolved, and it is not particularly short. Goldfish can be trained. Um, second of all, um, yes, while certain things can cause users of technology to be flighty, the idea that because we have mobile phones now, uh, and uh, as a result we somehow have uh, collectively suffered some form of brain damage, smacks very heavily of old man yells at cloud type uh, uh, sentimentality. It's not true. Uh, attention spans have not gotten shorter. Attention spans actually are now longer than ever. Having access to knowledge uh, at the drop of a hat, having a computer on you 24-7, and having the ability to find any information you want almost instantaneously has absolutely no effect on our attention spans. I'm not going to say it hasn't had any effect on our society, and I'm not going to say it doesn't have any effect on us individually, our individual psyches, or collectively, sociologically speaking. It absolutely does. But our attention spans, it's simply not true that they've gotten shorter. Absolutely shaking your fist at the sky here, um, definitely. Now, what does uh, influence somebody's attention span, which can be measured through technology use, which is meted out in many studies, uh, including the one that I can think of off the top of my head as Katika Laputi et al., a University of uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Excuse me. But there are several others. Uh, which showed that a person's mood can influence the way that we use technology. And in fact, those that self-reported as being depressed frequently had a tendency during those periods of depression to use technology in a way that is similar to what's being described here. That uh, their uh, browsing was more listless, they spent more time bouncing from page to page, uh, it was unfocused, flighty, and yes, it seemed to have a short attention span. Now, if if this and there oh here we have it there's a link to the new study now if uh this has found any measurement at, like this at all that indicates that this is possibly true and we'll see in a moment um had they considered and they should have because Kotika Lupudi was 2012 and there are many studies that occurred between then and, and 2015 had they considered that their 2000 group uh participants uh, may have been depressed, or maybe that depression has increased since the year 2000. Maybe it has nothing to do with the mobile revolution. If this study, if it mentions at all mobile uh, device technology, um, I tell you, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. My guess is that this little bit was inserted by Mr. Kevin McSpaden here. And of course, they don't actually link to the article. It's just... 
about ads microsoft.com it's just a link to microsoft's ad page okay do we have any other okay the study was conducted by microsoft fine i got a second microsoft 2015 um attention span microsoft attention spans we are moving from a world where computing power is scarce. Okay, this could be it. Consumer Insights, Microsoft Canada, 2015. So, think digital is killing attention spans? Think again. Oh my god. The very first goddamn sentence of the fucking article. The first sentence. As more facets of Canadians' lives go digital, we felt it was important to understand what impact today's digital lifestyles are having on consumers and their attention, and what that means for marketers. Hence, this research was born. I can honestly say the study proves that you don't always get what you expect. It's no surprise that increased media consumption and digital lifestyles reduce the ability for consumers to focus for extended periods of time. Uh, okay. It is. It is a surprise. Um, Let's read on, because there is one instance in which I would say that that's potentially true. But I never would have guessed that tech-savvy consumers are actually getting better at processing information and encoding information into memory. There, there it is. There it is. Yes. Increased media consumption and digital lifestyles reduce the ability for consumers to focus for extended periods of time. There is more content out there. Yes, when we had three channels that were broadcast and we had to pick it up by antenna with rabbit ears on the TV covered in tinfoil, yeah, we would sit there and we would watch the crappy shows and we, yes, we would be enraptured by it because we had no fucking choice. Now we have choice. If we don't like the way something is going, we go find something else. But yes, we have more information and there's more out there. We are getting better at prognosis. Fake news. Anyway. Uh, that was a rabbit hole. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, Kelly. Okay, Kelly. Yeah, we don't need that. We know what those are. Com check. One, one, two, seven. That's supposed to be me? Hey, this is Agent Dylan. No, okay. I'll be your wingman during training. Word of advice. It's always the know-it-alls who make the biggest mistakes. And we can't afford mistakes, so keep a level head. As Wheeler explained, you're starting basic and building up from there. Go to the information gathering menu on your left and launch the fingerprint module. Drag the window around a bit and uh, complete the test by typing the command help. Easy, right? The information gathering menu on the left. There is nothing on the left. That's the edge of my monitor. And I can assure you there's nothing on my right monitor, so it's not just the fact that they thought it was on the second monitor. Um, okay, open the information gathering menu. On the left. What's this? Com check, one one two seven. Hey, this is Agent Dylan. That's for the dialogue. That is back to navigation. Oh, my bad. I'm hoping that when I cover the mic when I cough, it's sufficient. Um, okay. Information gathering menu on the left. What the hell are you talking about? That ain't it. Oh. What a weird thing to do. And I can't easily go back? Yeah. What the hell? Nope. That's not what I want to do. Okay. Well, whatever. I'll just do what it said. Information gathering. Most fingerprint. Information gathering module initiated. Okay. Now, in, do I need to go all the way back in order to find my a goddamn objectives? Is there a quicker way to access... This would be a perfectly acceptable use of two monitors. Drag the window around. 
Type the help command in one of the windows and hit enter. Drag it, a drag it, a drag it, a drag it, a drag it. Help. Oh, I got a knock on my door. Um. Oh yes. Apologies, interrupted by my adoring public. Uh. Here's a list of available commands in this terminal. Run help. Okay. Me. Oh, well, it's still trying to run in both monitors, but now I can at least see OBS on the other side. Help, fingerprint. Fingerprint, inject a series of commands to open ports. Wow, the way they put this. Inject a series of commands on open ports of a designated target and identify the technology behind it. That is a definition. Okay. I did the thing. I did the things. I did this. <sighs> Why is this shit broken? I did this. Look, I done it. I done it. Information gathering module initiated. Drag it, drag it, drag it. Did this. I did this. What did she say about firing the UI designers? Uh-huh, yeah. You should. You should definitely fire your user interface team. This is a terrible interface. But if you want to fire me, that's just fine. I'm prepared to never play this again. We did this. I can't check them off. They didn't check themselves off. And it says to go on the left. There's an, there's the edge of my screen, dude. What in the fuck? Is this fucking me over because it detects two monitors? Because there's nothing... Uh, look, I'll even show you. Um, uh, move on. Okay, you're going to get... Uh, let me. Um, how am I going to do this? Okay, you're going to get the uh, infinity tunnel here for just a moment. There, look. Nothing. There's nothing on my second monitor. It's just taking up all this real estate for no reason. And there's nothing for me to click on to the left. I have no third monitor. At all. Uh... Okay. <sighs> Literally unplayable, apparently. I mean, and I'm not joking. Oh, do I have to start, hit start training first? Oh, you... Oh, son of a bitch. I'm an idiot. I admit it. Oh. Drag the window around. Nope. All right. Excellent. You can listen and follow basic orders. That's not as common as you'd imagine. The Stinger OS lets you access resources from other divisions within the Black Watchmen. Division 40 is in charge of Imens, the imagery intelligence section, and Massens, the measurement and signature intelligence. They provide you with satellite feeds and drone coverage during operations. You can access these services at the bottom of your screen. Division 40 is the fourth icon from the left. Click it and enter the following coordinates. 38 latitude, minus 77 longitude. Once you activate the satellite, click the back the globe link to end your task. All right, so I'm willing to cop to being an idiot for that last one and not seeing that I actually had something that I had to start. It was a large play button, but in my defense, uh, the instructions were absolutely unclear, and this UI is a fucking mess, so. All right. Uh, open the drone and uh, drone and imagery module bottom of the screen. Yes, do the latitude and longitude and then hit back to globe. Okay, let's do that. That's it right there. Drone and imagery intelligence active. 
That is not 38 and negative 77. I am almost positive of this. Maybe it is. Let me check. 38, 77. Oh, no, I am mistaken. That is correct. That would be the Pentagon. Arlington and Washington. There we have it. Um, all right. Well, you win uh, this round and most likely all previous rounds. Back to certification. I feel like I'm accomplishing things. It's at the top left of your Stinger OS. Change your avatar and return here to finish this certification. Oops. Avatar. This all seems extremely arbitrary. And I have access to avatars that seem high above my actual appropriate rank. All right, well, we're going to go with the Black Hood Hacky. Of course, a hacker, why wouldn't we do the Hacky? We're going to go with the Black Hood Hacky. Look at that. Done. Shapeshifter. Wow. They have some serious designations here. I feel accomplished. I am Leet. I am Haxor. Basic Osent. Okay. Is this, is this the game, or is this still the tutorial? It's gotta be the tutorial. This is all Academy stuff. Okay. I'm impressed. Yeah, fuck you. Man, I love this part. It's fun to see what you newbies are made of and separate the wheat from the chaff. Right. Domain name reconnaissance. You'll need the DNS from the host mapping module, which you'll find in the information gathering menu. Swizzer 194com dash 10 is the S Information gathering module initiated. <laughs> no dash over here. Running a fuzzer. I don't know if this qualifies as OSINT. I'll qualify this as either passive discovery or fingerprinting, but if they call it OSINT, I guess it's their game. 194.com, hive my 194, test 194.com, okay. I don't need the loud fanfare. I I feel just Another fine. Way of finding domain names is through a search engine's database like Google, Yahoo, Bing, and the likes. Ask Jeeves isn't as useful anymore. Sometimes a search engine will accidentally index a private subdomain because of an oversight, leak, reference, or careless third party. We're here to take advantage of that mistake. I want you to use the OS int scan command on 194.com and specify a database. <laughs> Okay, this seems like needlessly complicated for OSINT, but okay. OSINT scan 194.com. Okay. Information gathering module initiated. Okay, we got uh, main domain test. We found server, code, and Apache. I wonder if these are... I hope this doesn't qualify as breaking their rules. Indeed, that site does exist. It's giving me a 404, but this is very clearly the site. Yep. Um, okay. 
Back to certification. Excellent work. You know what you have now? The expertise to quickly identify potential entry points in an enemy network. You have the keys to their house. Of course, once you're inside the house, you'll need a new strategy. There's one last trick to the OSN scan. Excuse me? Sometimes you have the keys to their house? Domains. Though one domain could be protected. You, uh, you know what you have now? The expertise to quickly identify potential entry points in an enemy's network. You have the keys to their house. That does not track. You can tell where the doors and windows are so you can open their un unlock their front door. That doesn't make any sense. I'm being overly critical. I know, but that's exceptionally dumb to say. All right. Uh, yeah, sometimes a server can host multiple domains, yes. Um, the one domain could be protected and another could be vulnerable. Uh, yeah, I guess. Could be. Depends on what vulnerability we're talking about. IP addresses are unique numbers that identify internet servers. And if you search by IP, you'll find all the domains and subdomains present on that server. All right, this is a lot of reading to just say scan by IP. I don't know what level of intelligence they're expecting people to be at when they're playing this game, but I would expect them, if they're playing this game, to know what an IP address is. All right, it's uh, 98, 124, 199, 93. Um, here we go. Gathering module initiated. 98, 124, 199. So 38 or 83? 83? Uh, repositories bing.com. This time, the only legitimate use of bing? No, not even this. <laughs> All right. That was the wrong. Thing. It was 38. Oh, <laughs> it's up in the corner. I was totally wrong. It's 93. Probably should have wrote it down, but I guess I didn't have to now that I see that it's up there at the top. <laughs> oh, boy, thank you. Thank you so much. That was... Okay, whatever. Boom. I've got so many XPs now. Advan oh, now I got a choice. Advanced OSINT or finger. Let's do advanced OSINT. We just did the basic. We might as well keep going. You're almost there. Shut up. I don't like you, I'm Sergeant really Wheeler. With the tools you've learned. I've set up various subdomains. I'm tired of listening to you. Ah, the tools you've learned. I set up various subdomains on 19.4. I want you to test out different sfuzzer. Dictionary attacks. You'll notice contrasting results between a five second attack and a 20 second one. Follow the objectives to complete the task. Open the module. Enter the commands Fuzzer 19.4, T5, and T20. Okay. Information gathering module initiated. Okay. Okay, now we have those in excess of five times, whatever time is in this case. All right. Didn't teach us much more than we already knew, but all right. Now, I want you to see the difference between a sfuzzer and an OSINT scan attack. I don't like the fact that they're calling these attacks. These are not attacks. They're they're using weird nomenclature, and it's kind of starting to bug me. 
run both a 15 second spuzzer and a 500 deep osin scan why you just asked me to do this i just did this a couple of times even you want me to see the difference between them i've already run them i know oh. Let's run another Spuzzer scan against 19.4.com. Only this time, we'll do it for 15 times. 15 times instead of 20 times. It's definitely going to give us the same exact information again. There should be a progression of knowledge here. Not looking at the same information over and over. I don't know. I'm being kind of bitchy because I'm sick. It's fine. Listen, scan night team four dot com. That's I keep typing note team. Uh, and five hundred deep. Rolling five hundred deep with my homie Gabu. And nothing of value was learned. Find the subdomain forums and uh, shut up. Forums 194.com. Okay. Uh, Alright, they just want me to run a longer spuzzer or a deeper. Yeah, that's fine. Let's uh, start with the fuzzer. Uh, we didn't find anything when we did 20. Let's do 30. And I hope that we can control C this when we're tired of waiting. Or we find what we're looking for. Okay, nothing new yet. That's all. Look then. Oh, that was... That was advanced, Osint? That was advanced? Are you sure about this? Alright, fingerprint. Look how far you've come. Time to learn more. <sighs> Just scan the WW. So the main type, fingerprint, 184.com. You can enter this. Any terminal on make launch the fingerprint module. Also, you can launch the terminal via your information gallery menu. <sighs> With the exact command in your certification objective, so make sure you follow the objective. Watch the fingerprint module and check your fingerprint. Okay. Information gathering module initiated. Fingerprint night team four dot com. My cord is getting tangled up in my chair. I'm assuming that fingerprinting is the same as footprinting. They're just using the other, less common term. Well, that didn't work. Oh, I forgot to specify it. Uh, yeah. My bad. Boring shit. As you can see, we're running in a. As I can see, no, I didn't have a chance to actually see the results of that scan. <coughs> Fingerprint module didn't identify any vulnerabilities. Can't have the public face of our organization vulnerable to attack. Anyway, a fingerprint works by testing hundreds of requests for a specific technology and recording the software version that's running, along with known vulnerabilities. You want me to run the exact same? Oh, this one's on test. Okay. Oh, now I can see that we're running Apache, and it says version up to date. This is that's a weird response. But okay. We've got FTP, we've got POP3, we've got HTTP. You'll now realize 
Alright, all right, it's just starting to get really boring. Um, Alright, this time on server. But we're not actually in the game yet. This is still the tutorial, so we're going to stick with this at least to try some of the actual gameplay. I wonder if I... Do I need to do all the tutorial, or can I just kind of move on? Well, we got a vulnerable MySQL install here. 5521. Port 3306. Exploit database. With information Let me guess, I just have to type exploit and then give it the thing. Shut up. technology in the domain freekevin.net. Okay. Let's start with the fingerprinting then. Information gathering module initiated. Binary print. Freekevin. Net. This does not sound like it should be a target website. It sounds like somebody who's trying to free somebody who is perhaps being unjustly incarcerated, but it's fine. I work apparently for the government now, so. Um, I suppose I probably should get the top level domains first. Information gathering module initiated. Um. www.informs <coughs> um, I'm going to take it that that means that there's nothing there because it's not giving me the big old this is exploitable sign which is totally true to life totally true to life you see this is vulnerable. Enter this command. Pwned. Uh, PHB. PHB. Version up to date. That does not mean that it's not vulnerable. You can have zero days. They are a thing. Um, Alright, so either we do a... Let's do a sfuzzer. Instead of doing it. Excuse me. Oh, I forgot what my syntax is, though. Um... Web mail. Pull up a Mossack Fonseca up in this. Do some Panama Papers. Exploit their web mail. Exigent. No, okay. Well, we don't see anything. Let's run the fuzzer again. All right. Oh, that's the host fingerprint module. Let's do that for 30 seconds. Can I run multiple ones of these? Yes, I can. Gathering module initiated. Let's do a thousand. We're going to have so much information. We're scanning a thousand of something. Intranet. Why would there be an intranet? <laughs> A misconfiguration, apparently. A pretty major one. Defies all definition. An intranet on the internet. That's yeah, vulnerable. SharePoint 2007. Of course, it's going to be SharePoint. Open your exploit database module. Well Shut up, Let's Dylan. Search exploit SharePoint 2007. Information gathering module initiated. SharePoint 2007. 
one CVE 2010-3964. Unrestricted file upload vulnerability in the document conversions launcher service in Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2017, 2007. Service Pack 2, when the document conversions load balancer services enable allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code via a custom SOAP request to TCP port 8082, aka Malform Request Code Execution Vulnerability. Okay. That sounds like a winner. <clears throat> Search Plate CRM 4.0. Then we can launch into the juicy stuff. I don't like, like, if this is really the way uh, operating systems are going to look and operate in the future, we are all in serious trouble, because nothing about this is enjoyable. Uh, if I could configure this, I would turn off the stupid voice when it says launching information gathering module, and look at how garbage this desktop is. Like, look at all this shit. Can we do minimalist here? Why do we have to have all this shit all over the place? I'm not even using any of it. Ooh, level up. Do I get to uh, get new gear? Do I get any loot? Can I spend perk points? Can I build a base? Is this Fortnite? Is this what Fortnite looks like? Pretty sure I'm playing Fortnite right now. Box acid. Dylan, I swear to God. <sighs> Cyberdynegroup.net. Am I going to trigger the singularity? Is this how Judgment Day begins? Information gathering module. Information gathering module. Initiated. Information gathering module. Information gathering module. Now look at this. Initiated. There's no discernible task. It's just windows on top of windows on top of windows, and they blink when they're ready to do something. It's just... <sighs> Cyberdynegroup.net So, let's do a full minute. I misspelled it. Cyberdynegroup. Is that correct? It got rid of my instructions because I moved a freaking... Yeah, cyberdynegroup.net. That. Post and scan. Cyberdynegroup.net. Google. Uh, and we'll do a thousand deep. Fingerprint. Start with www. Mobile VPN. VPN running on port thirty one. That's all we got. Cisco VPN client. Oh, that's all I had to do? I thought I had to find a vulnerability and everything. Okay. Well. Thanks, I guess. Awesome. Now launch the exploit database and find the CV record for the Cisco VPN clients. Oh, it just brought me back to where I was. Search exploit Cisco VPN client. Cisco VPN client 5x. Doesn't say, it just says it's a vulnerable version. It uses weak permissions for VPN client, any making it easy to spoof, which allows local users through a UDP delivery to gain privileges by entering an arbitrary program name in the command field at the application launcher session. Exploit to use content spoofing. Alright. 
run help command for a detailed explanation of this command. Oh, let's refer that up here. All right. Oh, it's telling me to launch. Ah. The sign of a good game when you do something unexpected, it just. It's still telling me to launch it. Oh, no objectives. Okay. Oh, I did it. That's all it wanted me to do. It's fucking stupid. Open the network intrusion menu. Launch the Fox Acid server module. Oh, I swear to God, Dylan. No. No, you're not. No, stop. All right, Dylan, I changed my mind. I do want to hear from you. Fuck you. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, Dylan. You came back. Okay, shut up. The delivery method in the exploit database module for Cisco VPN client. Enter the exploit mentioned in the exploit database module for Cisco VPN client. Use the rootkit after midnight. Click on the hand to the other right. Select VPN server dying group. All right, let's just do this. I'll have to follow the thing. Oh, God. It's got a skull on it. It's Fox Acid Server. server connection initiated. Um, it was UDP. Exploit. Uh, content spoofing. Root kit. After midnight. Target URL. VPN. Cyberdyne group. That uh, target technology. I don't know. Target five hundred. All right. I don't know what it didn't tell me what to do with this. I don't think. VPN cyber Not yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Cisco VPN client. Okay. I didn't it didn't tell me to do that because I didn't have to. I just had to pick the right thing. Fox acid attack launched. Fox acid attack successful. <sighs> you can filter turbine C2 network cards by toggling the four categories at the top of the screen. You also search by name or address. This is so... Alright. Well, we can connect to their VPN server. It's a Windows box. Agent controlled. None yet. Alright, that's all I have the time and patience for today anyway, so... Let's close it out here. I might play more of this. I don't know. It hasn't been too fun so far, but no, oh, I'm done with the tutorial anyhow. So I guess at least next time. Oh, I got a mission now. There we go. Story mode. Concerned. Shut up, Wheeler. I guess if we do play again next time. Why does it say 40%? I thought I did all the modules. Oh, there's more. Oh, digital forensics. Ah. Yeah, I'm at least going to play more to see what that's about. That's my thing. Um, and at least see what the actual game is like now that I got a mission and stuff. So, yeah, I'll, I'll continue playing this. I'll do at least one more video when I get some time. So, all right, bye.